testing. Mm. Romans says, but we glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation work in patience. God is trying to teach you some patience. Amen. And patient experience. Amen. How are you going to tell somebody how to go through when you never went through? Yeah. Oh. Come on. And experience hope. Mm. And hope make it not a shame. Praise God. Says we've got to build up yes. the valley gates. Okay. We're going to go back again and spend some time in the valley. There's a story of the eagle. Mm. When the eagle, after a while, has been flying and his wings become tattered, matted, and there's insects in his wings, and he doesn't fly as he normally does. So he can't catch the prey as he normally does. No. So he goes to a stream, and he sits at the fresh water, and he plucks out every single one of his feathers. Because he's in the valley. He's in the valley. And then when he's naked, he goes into the cold stream, the word of God. And he washes off all the parasites. And he come out, but he can't feed himself. So the other eagles who've been that way, had the experience, had the patience, and now have the hope. They fly over and drop food for this eagle. Fly over and drop food for this eagle. Because he's not able to feed himself. So when he's stronger now, he flies out and he feeds the next person. Says we're living in dangerous times. Dangerous. dangerous times. It is time for the church to become the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. Preaching, teaching, praying, Amen. but we're not getting anywhere. <laughs> the next gate he came to was the dumb gate. The dung gate was broken down. So they couldn't take the mess out of the city. They couldn't take the rubbish out of the city, eh, hey, Jesus? They were living with the rubbish in the city. What is God saying? We're living with the sin in our lives. Because the prayer life, the, old, the dung gate is broken down. That the sin cannot get out of our lives. It's something we need to think about. Unless we repair the down gate, unless we go before God and say, God, this gate in my life has broken down. I need to get a sin out of my life. The Bible said, righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach, the same name, word reproach, unto any people. Nehemiah said that they were a, a reproach. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity, they are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Affliction, vulnerable to oppression, oppression. reproach, embarrassment to themselves. The church has been praying for years. I know it's not. We've been praying for years and no result. Because sin is in our life. There's an order to the breakdown. No repentance. No witnessing. Nobody's going through the valley. And sin is in our life. If we don't get a sin out of our lives, we are in church, but we're not going anywhere. And this is a this is a, a serious thing. The Bible said, "Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, as a reasonable service." You see, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want to do good, but I don't have the will to do good. Paul said, when I would do good, evil presents itself. That's why the scripture said, tie the sacrifice to the altar. Tie. You know, I was going to bring a piece of string, but I've forgotten. Say that I rebuke you, I forgot to bring my string. I was going to tie somebody to the altar. Because you know when you want to leave, 
leave. I want to leave because I'm tied to it. I can't leave. I want to come with sin, but because I'm tied to the altar, I can't go. I want to do my own thing, but because I'm tied to the altar, I can't leave. By the sacrifice to the altar, because my will wants to do something else. I want to pray, but my will won't allow me to pray. I want to fast, but my will won't allow me to fast. If we don't get the sin out of our lives, since even our tongues don't have no meaning. You know, I used to ask myself, you hear so many people speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, but it's nothing, nothing. The Bible says, holiness unto the Lord. Unless we get rid of the sin of our lives, with the sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, we need to get back to all time holiness Amen. before God. Hallelujah. When you say, Lord, wash me, Lord, purge me, make me be an example to the church. Use me, Lord, in a mighty way so the church can see and know that my Redeemer living. Because the young people want to see God in us. Then Philip have seen us praying and praying and praying, and God will pray for diabetes, and God will pray for backache, and we never get healed. The Bible talk about the fountain gate was broken down. The Holy Spirit. This gate was the most ruined of all the gates. They're talking about the victory church. Because the holiness, the Holy Spirit wasn't working in the believer's life and the old book world because they weren't praying. What is the victory church? It's a church full of people singing and dancing and it's, it's lovely, beautiful, singing and dancing, praising God, everyone speaking in tongues, but there's no power. And you, you know I'm right. You know I'm right. Singing and dancing, church full, the music is going, but there's no power. With nobody repenting. With nobody going witnessing. With the sin still in the church. No wonder there's no power. No wonder we come to prayer meeting every time talking about we should be here, we should be here. But let's get the sin out. Amen. Repent. Go back to all time repentance. I did it. I don't know the power that God has given me in my life because I spent some years repenting before God. Empty prayers. Tongues but no power. The Bible said, but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We shall receive power. Where is the power of the church? Where is the power? We come to prayer meeting. We come to week after week. Give me a set of goal. I said, God, this is where I need to be in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, you'll be in the same place, same time, every week, every year. You go home and you cannot, you cannot find the demon in your home. We come to prayer meeting and we get up and we go home and we cannot find the, find the demon in our house. Something is wrong. There's a connection break somewhere. But we need to go back on our knees. Spend some time in the outer court. And repent in the outer court. And cry to God. And when you know that you surrender your will to God. And you surrender your life to God. Then start to walk into the holies of holies. When you get in there. You know yes Lord. I have repented. Hallelujah. Glory. He says out of our bench and for rivers of living water. Where is that water? Where is that water? Where is that? The out of your belly shall flow rivers. The next one, what was broken down was the water gate. We're not living by the word anymore. The Bible said 
That word is a lamp unto my pathway. And it's a guide to my footsteps. So where I'm going, I only just reach that place faster. Where everything I do now, I totally depend upon God. Because I always say, if I'm going to preach it, I can't be the same boat as everybody else. And I make an effort to get up to my bed and see God. I make an effort to pray. My, I said, God is an oil run down from the head. So I need to be anointed. David said, as a heart panted after the water brooks, so my soul long after you, Lord. David said, oh, that my ways were directed to keep your commandment. Then would I not have suffered so much. Then, I would, then would I not have suffered so much if, I would, if my life, my flesh, if, I, if my life was geared to follow your word, then I wouldn't suffer so much. The scripture says, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. My, we're going we're we're to pray when I'm finished. We're going to pray. Are we gonna, I mean, we're going to pray when I'm finished. He said, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And they've shewn out, shewn out for themselves, System, broken system that cannot hold any water. Self righteousness. Our bed is short. Do you see where we are, church? Sometimes we get so excited and we run up and down and we worship, but we're not getting anywhere. So then we need to listen and assess ourselves. And go home weeping, saying, My God, my God, where am I? God, help me again to start again. Help me again to see your face again. One of you, somebody among us, needs to ask God, let me be the one then, Jesus. Let me be the one who surrender my will. Now, Zacchaeus, they were all at the same level. And Zacchaeus says, no, 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 no. I need to see Jesus for myself. Because when we're all at the same level and he comes, he don't notice me different from the rest. So he decided to climb up spiritually. He decided to pray and from us more than the rest. He decided to trust God more than the rest. And he climbed to the top. When Jesus Christ came, he didn't see the rest. He saw him. If you want Jesus to pick you up from the rest, go deeper and go higher. Amen. That you stand out. That you stand out. That you begin to talk about you. What's wrong with her? She always have her head down with the Bible. What's wrong with her? That you're noticed. That they notice that there's a passion in you. That they notice that there's a difference in you. In Hannah, they noticed there was a difference in her. They thought she was drunk. They thought she was drunk because she had a passion for God. There was a real turning in her that said, this is not enough. This is not enough. This is not enough. God has promised us more than this. David said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The next thing wrote down was the horse gate. Revelation 19 says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Warfare time. It's warfare time. Many of us are sleeping with the enemy. And because we're sleeping with the enemy, we're not doing no warfare. Because we're sleeping with the enemy. Church, arise. Arise and realize it is coming to 12 o'clock. The scripture said, put on the old armor of God that you will be able to stand. The armor of righteousness. But we have people running around naked in the church. Naked. No armor on. Running around naked in the church. The Bible said, put on the armor of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness and the girdle of truth. 
We have to go back again. Go back again to repentance. Go back again seeking God. It is too long. We are saying the same thing too long. We have got to say enough is enough. It is time for us to say enough is enough. We need to sacrifice a bit more. How long do we fast? When last have we taken time off from work to fast? We take time off to go on holiday. But when it comes to fasting, we haven't got the time. So we really don't really want to change, do we? If you really want to change, you must say, God, I'm maybe losing a week's money. But the blessing you're going to give me is worth more than a week's money I'm going to lose. And take a week off and cry and lay before the altar of God because I want to see a change in my life, in my children's life, in my own and in my church. Hey, thank you, Jesus. The more you give, is the more you get back. The final gate is the eastern gate. The return of Christ. When last have you heard a message about the return of Christ? You don't hear much of that anymore. Because nobody's looking for the return of Christ anymore. When I was younger, we were so frightened that God's going to come back at any time. We were so scared to sin. Because the, the pastor always says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, two shall be in the bed. So sin was something you fear. But some of the young people have never heard that scripture. So as far as it comes concerned, God isn't coming for now. Because it's not something that's in their mentality. So the church has fallen asleep. The Bible said, awake, Zion, awake. Awake and trim your lamp. Church, our abilities are our handicap. And our talents has become our stumbling block. What do I mean? Everybody wants to sing. Everybody wants to sing. Singing, singing, singing. Young people in our days want to become preachers. Not everybody wants to be a musician or a singer. We're talking about a strong man. Satan was a serpent in Genesis. He was a dragon in Revelation. Anything you don't deal with is going to grow. Jesus. It grows in strength. Amen. Satan was a serpent in Genesis. They didn't deal with it. The Bible said the great dragon in Revelation. Anything you don't deal with it's going to grow in strength. Church, at this grim hour, the world is sleeping in darkness while the church is sleeping in the light. We need an encounter with God. We need an encounter with Elohim. You need an encounter with El Shaddai. You need an encounter with the first and the last. You need an account of the Most High God. You need a tailor of our shop. You need a tailor of our shop. You need an account of the Most High God. You need an account of Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Nisi. You need an account of the Most High God. When last I get a tailor of our shop.
Prayer is a boiler room of the church. The church is a, it, it, it is a cruise ship full of people. And we, the prayer warriors, are stoking the fire, keeping the ship going. We are stoking the fire. I know nowadays they don't even use that anymore. But we're going back to old time religion. We want to stoke the fire. Stoke the fire. If the fire goes out, the ship won't be able to move. Revival is not a result of good teaching or good preaching. Revival is a result of men and women seeking God upon their knees. Revival is a result of men and women seeking God upon their knees and crying before God. When men and women fail, falls upon their knees and cry before God day and night, then and only then will revival break out. Many are falling asleep spiritually. Many have left the fold. Many have died along the pathway. Do you know how many people started started with a good intention to go to the end? But so many things happened along the way that there's so many just as has died along the pathway. So many have died along the pathway. Died. They had good intention. But there was no one interceding on their behalf. Where's the boy in the room of the church who was interceding? And they've perished along the way. Their dead bodies, dead bodies all along the way that have fallen prey to the enemy along the way of salvation. Many are weak and many are tired. Persistent prayer. We just stay in prayer until something happens. We stay in prayer until something happens. The enemy has an assignment over your life. The Bible said his assignment is to weary you. So once you know that, you're prepared. His assignment is to weary you. I've been praying, I haven't seen anything, and then you give up. But prayer is the only weapon that we have. Prayer is a meeting place where divinity meets humanity. A place where eternity meets time. Prayer changes the atmosphere. Prayer is contagious. Prayer transforms. Prayer influences a situation. Prayer is a disinfectant. It kills all known germs dead. Prayer is a disinfectant. It kills all known germs dead. Prayer changes the course of history. Amen. I'm coming down now. So say so what I'm saying is I want you to think about what I've said. I want you to go home and assess your prayer life. Not the prayer meeting. Because anybody can come to prayer meeting. Anybody can pray here. But it's what we do in private. We reveal what we lack like when we come to church. It's a time that we spend on our knees at home. We reveal my anointed when I'm in the church. Ask God to give it an anointing that break yokes and destroy burden. Not just like that, 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 that in the tongues. I shake it and run up and down. You don't want a victory blessing. That's what a victory blessing is. You speak in tongues, you dance and everything. But it's no fruits. When somebody comes in the church and see the anointing, everybody dancing, the music and praying, that's a good church. But don't want to realize there's no power. There's nothing, and then they leave. It is time for us to get down on our knees and say, God, use me. Let me be the one, like Zacchaeus, that rise up above the others so you can see me different. Let us all stand. We're going to pray. And if, if you don't mind, I want a good five, ten minutes. Is that okay? I don't want a two minutes prayer. I want to pray unto some tears. Come down your eyes. Because what you say is, God, bring me back again to the beginning. Hallelujah. Tear down the whole place in my life. 
the old me. I've been saved so long that I'm standing in the way. Tear down the old me. Not my will, but thine be done. I had to do it, saints. I had to go back. I had to come out of the Holy of Holies. And God, because I could repent. Because where I was, not of nothing was happening. But I spent so long on the repenting. I move inside now. I spent months on my knees repenting. Begging God to renew a right spirit within me. Use me again. Because God, I want to go to the great house. I want to do mighty things. I want to do powerful things for God. He says, he will give it to us. But you're not in the place yet. Lord, put me in the place. I want to change. I want the power to be seen in me. I want people to see and know that I've been with Jesus. When I saw the disciples, they said they were unlearned men. But they noticed something different about them. They've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. So we're going to pray now. And we're going to tear the play in prayer. Asking God, repent. I said, God, may me be a difference. Make a difference in my life, God. Because I want to be the one who makes changes in the church, in the nation. Choose me, Lord. Choose me, Lord. Choose me, Lord. Let us pray. Hey, tell the Lord, my shout. Father, tell the Lord, my shout.